Hello, welcome to this special edition of City Talk on Location. I'm Gabriella Holt, and we're here at the... We are here at the 37th annual Walk on the Wild Side, put on by Las Condolistas. It is a Mardi Gras here, and that's why I'm dressed in costume. I'm also a member of this group of women that work very hard year after year to raise money for children and the environment in the South Bay. And of course, we're here on the grounds of Rancho Palos Verde City Hall. It's great to be with you, Gabriella, and your crew from Channel 33. You've brought them with you. Yes, we did. We brought out the whole crew today along with my production assistant who's manning the camera right now, Diana Britton. And uh, the Walk on the Wild Side every year has a different theme. This year it's Mardi Gras and quite apropos seeing what had happened in the devastation of Hurricane Katrina and the celebration of the rebirth of New Orleans and yes. Mardi Gras. Yes, actually the theme, every year the women of Las Condoleezas put on the Walk on the Wild Side. As I said, this is our 37th year and we pick a theme and we picked New Orleans and Mardi Gras before the uh, the flood had happened and Katrina hit, but we continue to say let's celebrate the spirit of the people there and we um, raise money, our group, only for South Bay Charities, but we have Habitat for Humanity here and organizations that are here doing outreach and bringing in money and assistance to help with the victims of Katrina. So it's wonderful causes happening and the fact is this is a party as you can hear and I think it's time to walk on the wild side. What do you say? You betcha, baby. Here we are, Walk 2006. Tell me about what you have happening here today. We have a little bit of New Orleans here today, and we have some wonderful crafts. We have wonderful gourmet foods and our plant area. This is all prepared by our members, and then a fantastic New Orleans-style luncheon. Cajun food all prepared by the members. We have vendors here. We have docent walks that take you through New Orleans, and you learn a little bit about the uh, Louisiana lifestyle. We have wonderful activities here for the children and uh, just come and have a good day. Um, this is the 37th annual walk every year new theme little different little better what's so special about this year's theme to you? Well when we originally chose this theme uh, we had not had Hurricane Katrina and now um, when we decided to go along with it we really want to celebrate more the spirit of the people in New Orleans and um, we, uh, we have some of our charities here uh, that we support in the South Bay. We also have Habitat for Humanity here, and uh, that's a charity that is doing some work down in New Orleans supporting the hurricane victims. Now you got quite a costume going here. Who are you today, Miss Donna Seminara? I am queen of the court. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the, the crew in New Orleans during the Mardi Gras parade is called the Rex Crew. That has the king and queen. And we celebrate the, um, the beginning of the parade on uh, Fat Tuesday. Rex, the king and the queen arrive in uh, New Orleans to open up the, uh, the uh, celebration. Talk about the mission of Los Condoleezas. It's really twofold to support children and the environment in the South Bay. Talk about that. Well, you know, for 37 years we have chosen charities, three major charities every year to support. And uh, this year it's the uh, Toberman uh, facility, the uh, Los Angeles uh, Harbor Collaborative, and the YWCA of the Harbor area. They all support children and the environment. We also have our other charities, which is the Cabrillo Marine Museum, the South Bay Wildlife Rescue, uh, the um, who do support the environment in many, many great ways. The PV Land Conservancy, another, another uh, environmental charity. And this year we'll be supporting 17 charities total. Anything you want to add the community should know about this event? It's kind of hard to describe when you say, come on down and walk on the wild side. What is the walk? Well, the walk, actually, the walk on the wild side, you don't have to be a mountain climber or anything like that. We, we do a gentle stroll through the hillside of uh, Palos Verdes. And basically, at that point, uh, you learn, you go through our docent stations where our members t teach you a little, a little bit about New Orleans and what's going on. You said you come to the walk year after year. What brings you back? It is just such a wonderful event. It's colorful, it's fun. There is no other fundraiser I have ever been to that is like this. It's educational. There are just these amazing characters here, all in costume, the lunch is wonderful. It, it is absolutely my favorite fundraiser I've ever been to in my life. Well, we're glad to hear that. Of course, you know, everything here is made by the members. Anything that when you return, you say, I've got to get myself another bread or another jar of jam. What do you go, what do you go for? <laughs> Well, they, they 
change things every year. So, um, I mean, a lot of the, the jams are the same. There's uh, uh, nothing in particular. It's just fun to see all of the different things. And and one thing, too, I, I was going to say that there, I, you know, I've lived in this community for uh, 22 years. I, I Probably about five or six years went by when I would see the signs and I would say, say walk on the wild side, you know, big deal. So you're walking through the hills. I had, I was clueless about what this was all about until a friend said, come on. And I said, so I wouldn't want to walk up in the hills. What, what is this all about? And then I came and I was astounded. Just, it is wonderful. You're all made up too. <laughs> Gravelly voice. I appeared in about 30 movies. Oh, but I'm such fun singing Hello Dolly. And what a wonderful life that those songs became identified with me. I think your music is to die. Oh, yeah. I'm afraid we've run out of time. Maybe on a future visit, Huey will play for us. My life was full of secrets. Now, these three ghosts are ambassadors of New Orleans. Just like these ghosts, New Orleans is rising again. She's alive and awaiting your visits. Thanks for visiting with the spirits of New Orleans. And their chicken. <laughs> Denise and Kim, thank you for coming back to the walk, and I hear you both have a really special story to share with our viewers about your involvement with Walk on the Wild Side and how it was life-changing for you to come to our walk many years ago. Yes, I had wanted a little daughter for forever, and I was here on a Thursday 12 years ago, on uh, April 28th, actually, and my girlfriend showed up at, at the walk, and she wasn't supposed to come, and I said, what are you doing here? And she said, put your lunch down, a little baby girl's been born and the mother wants to give her to you for adoption. And that was 12 years ago and this is my little baby girl and I've been coming, I was actually coming years before that, so I've probably been 20 some odd years coming to Walk on the Wild Side. So it's really special. This is a very special place. So you've been coming year after year. How does, how do you, what do you like about coming to this walk? I like the little plays that they do. Those are fun. I don't know. Is it extra special because this is where your mom find out, found out about you? And this is probably one of the funnest places we go together because we go every year, almost. All right, here we are, Walk 2006. Marilyn Burrell, you are the walk chair. How is it going? It's wonderful. It's wonderful. We wish we had some sun, but other than that, it's great. It's great. I think everyone's having a great time. You chose this theme, and of course, we all know you picked Mardi Gras theme before Katrina, but it takes on new and special meaning as you're celebrating the spirit of New Orleans. What were you trying to capture, and how have you done it? We wanted to. I wanted to capture the the happiness of New Orleans and how different that city is. That it's almost a European city with its diversity as far as the cultures and the food and the voodoo and the color. And I think that they they have all done amazingly and have captured everything that I thought of. Give us a play-by-play -play of what happens for the people coming on the grounds, what they're seeing and what they're experiencing. When you first come in when, from the road, you see our float, who is affectionately called Kalijah. And then you'll go through the entrance. First thing you'll see is our artist's attic area, which is all of the beautiful furniture that they collect and paint and refinish and sell. And then directly across the street is our Pirate's Cove. Um, this is also known as Found Treasures, any other walk here but we all have named ourselves after crews and um, the gypsy elves they have handmade all of their crafts and um, we have quite a variety of wonderful things for sale there um, around behind the crafts area is a voodoo so you can get some voodoo cures and uh, on to the calendar and posters that we have also and then to our gourmet foods which is selling their beautiful jams and jellies and breads and all and then on to the luncheon. And the quilt is in the back to admire while you have your lunch this year. And of course we have the docent tours and the skits. Yeah. Go over some of those and what they're all about. 
One of the skits is about the food. So we have a Cajun chef and a Creole chef. So you learn a lot about the different styles of food and why they're called Cajuns and what Creoles are and that's why the foods are so different. The next skit is a scene from the oldest cemetery in New Orleans where some spirits may come and visit you. Um, Maria Laveau is with us today and also um, Jean Lafitte and also Louis Armstrong, which the airport is named after. After that, you go and visit the bayou where we see the pelican and the alligators and they teach you all about a very lonely Palos Verdes child who has had to move to the bayou of Louisiana and decides that it's not such a terrible place after all. Very good. Um, this guy here, what's his history? The, uh, the float guy, how did he come in? Kalijah it was built in 1952, and he used to be the statue for Mohawk oil. And the people who owned him years ago decided that they didn't want him anymore. And one of our members knows a gentleman in Anaheim who has kindly donated him to come with us for the day. And he is used, they use him for many different parties. And that's all this wonderful man does now is he throws amazing parties and Kalijah stands at his home. So if you ever want to know where he lives, go to Anaheim and you see the, the <laughs> you see our Indian, that's where he lives. What do you love most about being a member of this group? I think the good work that we do, we help lots and lots of people. And uh, the, the end result is that we work really hard, but it goes to some very deserving people and children and the environment. So that's really what I like the best about it. Anything you want to add, you want the community to know about this event, your involvement, anything I didn't capture you'd like to get out there? Um, I just think that they all need to know that this is happening every year, every year the end of April. So mark your calendars every every year, the last Thursday, Saturday of every year. And this is the site where we're going to be at the Rancho Palos Verde City Hall. And um, next year, we don't know what the theme will be because that will be up to the next walk chairs. But again, it will be an amazing event. These ladies really put on a good show. You did too. This year, you were in charge of creating this incredible ambiance. Talk about what feel you were trying to have it and, and, and what went into putting this all together. Well, the feel I wanted was to have Jackson Square in the middle, you know, to feel like you were truly in New Orleans because that is such a spectacular square, and to have the wrought iron feel of the wrought iron lampposts and, um, and also the color, to have a lot of color shown throughout the whole uh, walk with the purple, green, and gold, you know, to pop out as you walk through, because that's what you do see in New Orleans. Now, you're saying what you see in New Orleans, the group went. Some of the members of Las Condoleezas did go to New Orleans in January. Talk about what, what it was like for you to go there after Katrina and what you brought back from that, that trip. Well, first of all, all of us were a bit hesitant on going down there. We didn't want to infringe on them and, you know, whatever. But then we all decided that it would be a good thing to go and support them and try to get them back on their feet with, you know, tourism and that sort of thing. And so we, there were 20 of us that went down and stayed in a bed of breakfast, and that was really nice. Not all the big hotels at that time were open, so this was even better because we were with the local people there, and they would take us to restaurants of their friends that were trying to get back on their feet, so everybody was helping everybody. And, you know, we took tours, which were the friends of, of the bed and breakfast um, owners, and they were truly hospitable. I mean, they couldn't have been nicer. The service was the best we ever had. I mean, you would think that everybody would not be doing their job, but they kind of overindulged in their their um, service. And they uh, were grateful. They would talk to us about what had happened to them, you know, how to, Katrina affected them as far as losing their home. You know, some lost their homes but didn't lose their businesses. And so they were living in their businesses while they were repairing their homes. And 
but I mean, we were out at, at um, Oak Valley Plantation. We met a family that were, was displaced from New Orleans that came, you know, to tour that day. And they had lost everything. And so they were staying in a hotel and we talked to them for a long time with a lot of tears. We were all in tears because they had lost everything. And so I think that really impacted us as a group to feel, you know, the loss that they have experienced in this horrible, horrible event. But nevertheless, as soon as they stopped crying, they were so grateful for us to be there and to support them. Um, the tourism, I think, hopefully is picking up. Um, like at, Oak, at uh, the Oak Valley Plantation, before the, the Katrina hit, and this was way out, this was probably 50 miles out, they would have like a thousand people a day come through. Now they're lucky if they have 25 people come through. So that was a big impact on them. I mean, just all the tourism. The restaurants, though, were phenomenal. Um, when we were there, like I said, a lot of the big hotels were not open. The Harris uh, wasn't open, but for the most part, everything was all cleaned up in the French Quarter and raring to go, and they told us to be ambassadors back here to send people back to visit. And so here we are. At the walk on the wall side, I've just bumped into a bouquet of flowers. What's going on here, ladies? Well, we are just going around and spreading sunshine and beads everywhere we go. We were the ladies who were responsible for the floral arrangements at this year's Walk on the Wild Side. Thank you for lo noticing them. Talk about the flowers, Amy. You guys go all over the community and, and get flowers. Yes, we do. We go all over the hillside. We plant, uh, we cut the wildflowers and we go to people who allow us to come in and um, just gorgeous, gorgeous flowers every year. It's and just been a joy. Them. We arrange them in all these baskets and people are very complimentary and we're very happy to be able to do this. And we thank everybody who donates. Talk about this year's walk, why it's special, why you like being involved with the group. Well, I've been involved with the group for 11 years now, so this walk is um, really fabulous. It's very colorful. We've got lots of great special guests, and um, we have really gone all out this year. We are definitely enjoying the live music, and we are definitely enjoying all of the color, and uh, all of the guests seem to be enjoying it also. Yes, we've got a really big turnout this year, and we're just really grateful to everyone for coming out and supporting us for this really worthy cause. Thank you so much. charge of the kitchen, the menu, talk about the food this year. This year we've been trying to keep, keep our menu in keeping with the New Orleans uh, theme. And we have corn cakes with a corn relish, a fresh corn relish, and uh, sour cream with chives. Where our main entree is a uh, Cajun cheesecake with andouille sausage and chicken. And uh, we have a red bean and rice salad and just a green salad. And our dessert is a spectacular adequa, which is pecans and chocolate and whipping cream. And um, I, we have little Tabasco uh, bottles on all of our um, pla plates if anyone wants it to be spicy. Um, and um, I think that covers everything as far as the menu goes. This year, a little spicy for the New Orleans spirit. Talk about the logistics. Obviously, this group, we're not officially caterers, but you are truly catering an event for a thousand people. 
Um, well, we tried a lot of things, and because we have to serve cold, we couldn't do the traditional jambalaya or the gumbo. So we played around and tweaked a lot of recipes until we could come up with, like, the red bean and rice salad, which is cold rather than being hot. And with the uh, cheesecake or, or cheese pie, that could be served uh, at room temperature. So, it, and we used our New Orleans spices, Creole spices, uh, to bring that flavor to uh, our dishes. You work on this menu from once you hear the, the theme gets announced, the whole next year this group plans everything. Talk about the pre-planning with the food and what goes on to putting this meal together. We had little tasting lunches where people brought ideas to the table and everybody that wanted to could bring a dish and then we sampled all those dishes and from all those dishes we picked the ones that we liked the best. And then uh, we had our members tasting luncheon where we present that to all of members, our, our final product, and then they say yay or nay, we give them a little paper, then they write their comments on that paper. And uh, they pretty much liked everything we did this year. They thought it could be spicier, <laughs> so we kind of tweaked it up a little bit more to make it spicy. Why do you love being in this group? Everybody is so, they're all such good workers and they'll do anything. They just are fabulous women. They, this is all done with love. What's the feedback you're getting from people coming to the walk about this year's lunch? Everybody's liked it. In fact, we've had a couple people come by and ask us uh, who our caterers are, <laughs> which is really great. We said, well, we are. And we're coming back here into the kitchen area, and who do I find but the king of the court, Mike Simonera. Right, the king of the court, washing dishes. Well, I'm the husband of Donna Simonera, the president of Las Condolices, and kings have to do everything. Rule the kingdom and wash dishes. What do you think of this group? And you're involved every year, Mike. They're the most fascinating group of women I've ever met. They, they plan everything's down to the details. It's really first class. It's a five-star operation all the way around. My hat is off to all these wonderful women and their supporting husbands on doing this wonderful job. part of the group here. Making my way around. Of course. Yes. Nice. Like this one here. Like they actually packed pots and made. to put her garlic in it or her her secret stash of magic potions. Very fun. Have you ever come to the walk before? No. What do you think of this? Great. You're seeing all these homemade things. What, what's your first name? Talk about your involvement with the walk on the wild side. This year I'm one of the chairmen for children's lunch. We have children's lunch on Saturday. It's a special day for the children. We have crafts and uh, of course we have cabrillo and different functions for them to do. And then we have the children's lunch. We're serving poor boys this year with uh, grapes, carrots and a treat and uh, a horn and a mask and necklaces and of course a bowler hat. You're looking very festival from the bayou. Your alligators going on here. Alligator tour guide today. <laughs> 
Have you seen any gators out there? I saw one over by the Dozen Station. Very ferocious. <laughs> You've been in this group for many years. Why do you continue on? I think it's a, a wonderful group. It has does lots of great things for the community, and the philanthropies are, of course, all in need every year. This year, of course, we're celebrating the spirit of New Orleans. Um, talk about that, how that, how, what, you, what your thoughts are on this year's theme and, and the impact it could have in the community just in terms of helping in New Orleans. Well, I actually did go to New Orleans in January, so I was able to see firsthand the devastation. They need a lot of help. We had selected this theme in June and of course way before Katrina hit and we were vacillating whether to keep the theme or not we decided to keep it because we wanted to celebrate the spirit of New Orleans. Gabrielle you were really shaking and dancing out there. You betcha. <laughs> we're still going. We hope you enjoyed our walk on the wild side. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. I'm Gabriella Holt and from all of us here at walk on the wild side and city talk on location. It's always good to be wild. Thank you for tuning in to channel 33 RPV TV 33. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Have a great day, everybody.